Today we will discuss about leukoplakia and lichen planus. In this video I am going to explain 10 important differentiating points so that you can diagnose it clinically. As we know that histopathology is diagnostic. However, most of the time it is really difficult to motivate the patients for biopsy, especially those patients having leukoplakia. These 10 points will help you in your clinical practice. So let's start. You may be surprised but you can diagnose the patient at first glance by looking at their face. Yeah, it's true. In leukoplakia, patients are least bothered and reluctant to take any treatment. However, in lichen planus, patients are most of the time stressful and cancerophobic. So keep calm and just observe the patient approach. Leukoplakia predominantly occurs in males which is because of tobacco and smoking habits, which is more in male group in comparison to female. However, lichen planus mostly occurs in female patient. Next thing is habit history. Ask the patient about their habits. Leukoplakia mostly occurs in those patients who have tobacco or smoking habits or both. But here I would like to mention that there is a special type of leukoplakia called cryptogenic leukoplakia which occurs in non-smokers and in non-tobacco chewers which is actually an idiopathic leukoplakia. Patient with lichen planus most of the time don't have any habit. Next thing is a leukoplakia is asymptomatic but in case of lichen planus most of the time patient presents with burning sensation during taking hot and spicy food. Next thing you should remember that leukoplakia mostly occurs unilaterally but lichen planus is most of the time bilateral. After that you should check the erythematous area. Periphery of the leukoplakia is most of the time well demarcated and there is no erythematous area surrounding the white patch. However, in case of lichen planus you can find erythematous area surrounding the white areas. Here you can see there is no erythematous area surrounding the patch but here in lichen planus you can clearly see the erythematous area. Next differentiating point is weak hamstria. Mostly it is seen on skin lesions but you can also find in oral cavity. Here you can see fine white lace like stria. This is a typical feature of lichen planus but it is absent in leukoplakia. If gingiva is involved, sometimes you can find discomative gingivitis. But remember, discomative gingivitis is a generalized feature. It can be seen in other diseases also. So try to find out the weak hamstria. If weak hamstria is present with discomative gingivitis, you can go for lichen planus. Weak hamstria is absent in leukoplakia. Here I would like to mention that leukoplakia has a typical crack mud like appearance. Here you can see the crack mud appearance. Next thing is tobacco stain. In case of leukoplakia, as most of the patients are tobacco chewer or smokers, you can see brown stain on the teeth. Sometimes gingival resection is also visible. This tobacco stain is mostly absent in case of lichen planus. Last thing you should check is the post inflammatory pigmentation or post healing pigmentation. Here you can see the greyish pigmentation. As lichen planus has inflammatory reaction, post inflammatory pigmentation is the typical finding of lichen planus, but it is absent in case of leukoplakia. So, with these 10 points, you can differentiate leukoplakia and lichen planus clinically. It is necessary for the management point of view. Now, I have a slide for you. Pause the video observe the picture carefully and let me know your diagnosis in the comment section.